I remember this memory in my life that um, my mom, I was like super short, and my mom give, gives me my first paper, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I took my paper. Wherein, you know, uh, yes. yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of stories. Yeah, there is. There are stories <laughs> of the scenarios. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was kind of fresh air for them because uh, in that time, tattooers was uh, just uh, mm, these dudes with bread and bikes yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I was a like, cute girl doing tattoos yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I realized I'm just an artist and I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And uh, just being myself, and uh, yeah, it took me a lot of time to. Yeah. For all your followers, you have to find yourself and fight for that. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was hot. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> Hello, you guys. I hope you are all well. So our uh, today's guest is a tattoo artist and a singer and a canvas artist so uh, she's multiple things and she's amazing so without any further delays let's go and meet her hi olia hi how are you doing i'm doing super well i think so <laughs> first of all thank you so much for coming on the podcast and especially i know how much work that goes behind an artist so for me having somebody like you on the podcast means a lot thank you too because uh, for me it's also very like you know it's my first time and doing something like that i'm super shy super a bit like excited and i have a lot of feelings in that moment and uh, thank you for um, letting me be here and uh, also i think my english teacher going to be proud of me <laughs> I I'm hope sure. so. I'm sure. I hope so. Yeah. So I think let's start off with I think the first question being did you always want to be an artist? I just started to be an artist I think when I started to walk. I was 4 a my age was 4 years old and uh, I walked under the table and uh first thing I started to do I I took this thing that kids drawing on the floor yeah i started to draw it under the table and then i took all pencils and started to draw on the walls uh -huh. and the books always was uh, drawn by me too and then my mom she got pissed off that uh, everything is getting graffiti by me <laughs> so i remember this memory in my life that um, my mom I was like super short and my mom give, gives me my first paper and I'm like oh <laughs> and I took my paper and from that moment I started to draw a lot yeah so I just started to make it because I was kind of like it was boring to be a child without anything and uh, I was exploring the world around my uh, parents they wasn't make me super fun yeah. and uh, I was just by myself sitting and doing things and so you found a way to somehow keep you occupied which was art was one of the ways that kept yeah. you occupied yeah definitely because uh, it was uh, always uh, the time when I was sitting at home and I didn't uh, have uh, that much like things to do I haven't walk uh, uh, go out with uh, parents or with friends yeah and I was sitting at home and drawing all the way so yeah. that that started very early at an yeah. early age so when did you realize that this was something that you wanted to do for a living because you do multiple things as an artist which is from <clears throat> digital art to actually doing art on a canvas to being a tattoo artist so how did you figure out that you wanted to take this as a career this is super long story <laughs> i mean um when i was 7 my mom put me in an art school so all my way when I was growing up, uh, I was doing art. And uh, then when I was 12, my mom asked me, um, do you want to be an artist or do you want to be a psychologist? And in that age, I'm like, I'm not really sure that psychologist is fun for 12 <laughs> years old. So I said, I want to be an artist. And she put me in an art college. And uh, I was doing it 
like literally all the way and then uh, in art college I realized that uh, I don't want to be designer I don't want to be architect because it's kind of also boring I want to draw to draw uh, paintings and do canvases and things because my education is like, literally an artist I'm uh, we, are, we was drawing uh, we were drawing canvases four years of my education, wow. like naked people, we are going on the nature, drawing on the nature, and uh, yeah, so in that age, I realized I want to be an artist, and then one of my friends, oh no, you know, the thing is started with graffiti, yeah, so uh, I fell in love with my first boyfriend, and my first boyfriend, he was kind of graffiti artist, and I was 15, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Cool, you're doing graffiti. I want to do graffiti too because I'm doing art. So art is graffiti. Graffiti is an art. Yeah. And I started to do it with him uh, graffiti, and I realized that um, it's something like a riot. Yes. This was in uh, back home in Ukraine. Yes. Yes. When you are 15 years old, you want this riot. You want fight against the system, fight against the parents yeah. and uh, people that saying that uh, it's not allowed to do something. So I jumped into that. I started to do a lot of graffiti on the walls in my city. And that's how people got my name because that tattoo I have here, it's my nickname from graffiti. Oh, okay. Yes. And... Uh, um and then his friend he said just came to me in a random day he came and like uh why you don't do tattoos we need tattoo artists in, in our block wow. in our area yeah yeah <laughs> uh, because it was kind of like bad guys they did graffiti they did hip-hop culture yeah. was dancers all the way on my road i had this big community of uh mm, teenagers that are doing crazy things yeah and they said i have to start to do tattoos and i i just started i just uh, i came to uh, i started to make money as a promoter i just uh, was promoting some pamphlets tours okay all right like that. i collected my first money i was 16 years old yeah and then um when i was 16 years old i bought my first machine I found just ran just random dude uh, that was ready to uh, destroy his skin. Uh, yeah, and uh, honestly, it was horrible. Every all the, my beginning was disgusting because we were starting in a bad, not sterile places at yeah, homes. Yeah, was doing yeah, uh, on yeah. the on the floors, literally on the floors without gloves or yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah, it was super horrible. So you were learning to do this through these kind of experience you are trying it on people because you haven't learned how to do tattoo through any kind of uh, classes or that's no my problem <laughs> that's literally my problem because better to start with classes better to go out to the teachers better to find the professionals that will create everything and you will learn by him you'll have a the person who will navigate you and all the stuff. Yes. But in my case, yeah, I just started to explore randomly all these things. And I don't think it's right because uh, uh, it's dangerous. <laughs> exactly. There could have been uh, worst case scenarios that could have happened. Wherein, you know, uh, yes. yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of stories. That yeah, there, is, there are stories <laughs> of the scenarios, yes. And uh, uh, I don't think you know the problem is that uh, my parents they wasn't they weren't support me about doing tats. When I came to my mom and said I want, I'm going to be a tattoo artist, she's like, no, you don't have medical education. You don't have uh, this is dangerous. This is stupid. Don't do this. It's it's kind of um, you know it's not normal profession. You can, yeah. If you're coming to your mom at 16 years old and you're saying that you want to be a tattoo artist, uh, not all parents will understand that. Yeah, yeah. At that age. So how did you then learn safe practices of doing tattoos? Because you are at the end of the day doing a tattoo on uh, another person, right? So uh, was there any uh, way that you learned that there is a safe practice to it, or? that came across over the years 
safe practice? What does it mean? <laughs> like how you said the sterilization of everything oh, and using, yeah. uh, you know, certain equipment, wow. changing. Uh, the guy who sold me my first tattoo machine, by the way, it was very bad tattoo machine because he literally made it by himself. It yeah. wasn't as he said, this is super duper cool tattoo machine from Europe and you're going to do perfect tattoos <laughs> with this and super expensive and super fancy. I'm like, yeah, let's go. And then after half of the year, when I met exactly tattooers, I started to find some community, some people in society yeah, yeah, around yeah, me yeah. to learn from them what, what they do because I just, it wasn't that in that time there was no youtube that saying how to make it there was it wasn't it was some forums on the website yeah. but i don't know why i didn't get this idea in that time to read something about that so i just started to find uh, some uh, tattoo artists that can provide me some live hacks and yeah, things they yeah. do because uh we was getting all just from people people who was attached uh yeah in tattoo reality in tattoo life yeah because i don't think there is a manual people give you with the tattoo machine say this is how yeah, he you said, he said he said he sold me this machine and uh he said i will give you one lesson how to use it how to do tattoos okay just how to uh make a stencil uh how to do the lines and stuff and uh i had uh, no problems i'm like yeah let's go okay let's go and uh I found a guy who had a lot of bad tattoos, so he gave me his leg, and uh, I was super kind of brave. I was like, yeah, I know how to make it. And I started just make it, yeah, without any mindfulness. Uh, and you didn't have a fear that, you know, uh, you were actually trying something for the first time, and this was not a canvas, you were actually using... I don't think I have fear. No. I had this bad feeling that it's did it doesn't come well. I'm like, whoa! I'm so, I was so sad all the way. Like, why it doesn't come well as I want? And okay, another one. Did again. Oh, it doesn't come well as I want. Okay, another one. <laughs> it again. It's like that. It's like people were just the papers for me, just wow. the canvases like that. Yeah. But after the time, I realized, okay, girl, this is a skin. This is a house. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, something that people wear for whole lifetime. And yeah. not if you want to grow up as an artist, you have to understand that responsibilities. But when you are 18 and uh, you're just getting everything like that, there is no responsibilities. And uh, my thing is that I got a lot of people at the same time. I just came in, a, we had the... Uh, one like uh, it was kind of Instagram, but it wasn't Instagram. It was Wiki, okay. and uh, a message: Hi, I'm a tattoo artist uh, from now, and I got a lot of messages from people who knew me from graffiti. Okay. Yeah, because they're like, okay, you did graffiti, we remember you, so we want to make a tattoo from you because now you're doing tattoo, and I was uh, one of the first tattooer that was like young generation because oh, wow. before in my city there was only people who was. Uh, an adult there okay. was uh, charging a lot and they're charging like eighty dollars per lesson if you want to come there to take a lesson it was expensive for me as a student and uh, for me as a student tattooing it was uh, an opportunity to get money because uh, i had kind of bad relationships in my family in that moment i was trying to uh, leave my house i was running out all the way from home and uh, when I got a few times to the police stations and stuff, and I went out, it was just a, like, you know, just a random things for yes. graffiti or yes. something like yes. that. And then I went out, I'm like, okay, now I have to do my own money because parents will not give me money, nobody will give me money, I have to survive, I have to go and do that. And I started to have to look for opportunities to make it. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of motivation to make wood. And yeah. fast. You had a reason to say that, you know, you had to try something. So you had this push that was like, okay, you know, go ahead yes. and try this and see yes. if this is going to be... All the bad things in my life that gave me a big push to for motivation to reach something. It's, something bad happened. I'm like, okay, now this... Or this bad makes me go worse or um, I, I win. 
and yeah. I go to the like I will make my groves, right? Growth. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at this time, you didn't have a space to do your tattoos, right? Like this is another story. Yeah. Because, <laughs> so I'm sure since your parents didn't agree, you wouldn't do it at home. Yeah. So then, where did you decide to like you know get the tattoos done for your clients? Okay. Well, I just found uh, a page of model. She was nude model, erotic model. Okay. And uh, she put the message on her page. I want to know how to draw. Can somebody teach me how to draw? Okay. And she was the be beginning tattoo artist in the same time. She was trying to come from uh, nude photo sessions to the tattoo artist uh, okay. uh, profession. So I messaged her hi. Uh, it, it was it happened in the same time in the same week. Like uh, I got uh, in a bad situations. I realized that I need money, and then in that week I started to find kind of job. I found some people who got uh, some portraits for me for a canvas, but okay. they realized that it takes me a lot of time and it's not that um, popular and famous in okay. uh, that time to buy portraits and i found this girl she messaged that um she messaged that uh, she needed a teacher i said okay i i'm i'm an art college so, so I, I i can teach you how to draw and i came to her place and i realized that she's living uh, alone she has this uh, table for tattoos a sofa and big uh super crazy stuff dog dog like this you know this pit bull or yeah, pit bull. yeah, 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 yeah. stuff stuffed okay yeah. so um she, i i did i i gave her kind of few lessons and uh mm, she said okay do you want to live in my home <laughs> like <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> because i have nothing to do you have a table yeah, so if yeah, you yeah. I, from the beginning i said uh can you give me please just uh to have to make some tattoos here because i have uh, some people from my college that uh, is ready for uh for for tattoos yeah so she gave me a few times and then uh, i finished su super late and she said okay you can sleep in my bed it's fine and uh, we started to live together and do like support each other in the same time yeah but bad thing happened after a week uh she found uh, in the club we went it was kind of a local tattoo festival with five people <laughs> <laughs> usually, you know, usually at the festival it was like 50, yeah, 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 100 yeah. people, it was yeah. five people. Yeah. And uh, it, we was doing it in the club and uh, about I'm not saying about sterilization and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and in, in that uh, she said, you can come with me, you can help me to do something with, with my tattoos. I'm going to do tattooing there okay. and you can uh, sit with me, help me with my equipment. Yeah. And then she just left. She just uh, left me to do tattoos uh, and it was a queue yeah. of people who wanted wow. to do uh, okay. tats. I was doing it super like, yeah, okay, this is opportunity. Let's yeah, take it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And she found a few of our kind of common friends. One of the guy, it was my friend from the past. Yeah. And... Uh, she fell in love with him and the uh, next day i went super drunk and uh, i woke up and i realized that this dude's now living with us okay so it was one room four tattooers yeah one chair yeah. and big dog yeah <laughs> spinning everywhere it's super super disgusting story but uh, yeah this is how i began began my <laughs> tattoo wow, career wow, wow, wow. Yeah. so that was like for how long did that last that whole period two months wow we were sleeping in the same bed four people and wake up and everyone had a kind of appointment yeah every day yeah and these dudes they were teaching us how to do something we're sharing with some skills yeah i was uh i was feeling like okay that's kind of weird and crazy but it feels like romantic when you are 18 yeah. you're like okay it might be like that it's gonna be a cool story for my future podcast <laughs> okay <laughs> It actually is a cool story now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but then uh, they started to drink a lot and do things a lot and we started to fight with each other for I don't know for any stupid reasons I don't remember even the reason the reason was shit and uh, I realized that okay uh, it's time to leave because these guys uh, I found for them new open tattoo studio in the downtown oh, nice. in the middle of downtown uh, but i wasn't ready uh, to work there because i thought i'm not really uh, well experienced yeah, for that yeah so i said maybe you guys can go there and uh, yeah they, we, they started to work in that studio but then they brought me there too and we started to next half of the year to work in a professional studio it wasn't professional studio it was just a uh, guy he opened the place and he wants some tattooers and okay. we was that tattooers i started to work there and uh, the culture in the city was not being well in that time so the owner of salon he wasn't really sure who he's taken to okay. work there okay yeah so there was no like background checks and things yeah, like that yeah even portfolio he didn't care mm. yeah just bring clients bring people and uh, start do tattoos, tattoos. Okay. and uh, interesting thing that we started to bring people a lot of people started to come to us just they were crazy actually they didn't check our, our portfolio it was enough to say that i'm a tattoo artist that's it yeah and that's all yeah it's, I think it's time. Now culture is the, war, the way better and yeah, uh, yeah, the way yeah, more yeah, professional. Yeah, yeah. It's not that easy now to come in the culture. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. So when was the time you decided that you needed to move out of home? And Which why home? was that? Home, Ukraine. parents are Ukraine. Okay. Yeah. Ukraine. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me remember. I opened my own tattoo studio after I got tired to work with people I don't like and that treat me not well. Because first people started to treat me not well. Then I, after that, I was so sad. And from this sad moments, I decided to open my own studio. Then I changed the studio. Ah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, I opened my own studio and uh, I started to get a lot of people, yeah, a lot of clients. Uh, I, I got super famous in that moment. I, I, I won even one more tattoo festival that was oh, wow. also local. It was super local, but it gave me like like that famous yeah, thing. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I took all people uh, and all attention to my person. And yeah. uh, it was kind of fresh air for them because uh, in that time, tattooers was uh, just... Uh, Mm, these dudes with bread and bikes yeah, and yeah, motorcycle yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, cute girl doing that yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, and one time I got clients. Uh, he came from Dubai and he said, uh, can you do two sleeves in uh, one week? Oh, wow. Two sleeves yeah, in two one sleeves. week. Yeah. Okay. And I wasn't enough educated. I said, yes, let's go. <laughs> but uh, it's not possible. It's not really possible because your your body will not give you that. <laughs> it needs to heal, right? Like <laughs> Yes, your immunity system will like die yeah. from that. Yeah. So uh, I started, to, I, I, I did my plan. Like one in the morning I do here, in the evening I do here. And uh, like that seven days yeah. in a row. Yeah, and I was fine to work like that. My back was not hurting in that moment, you know. After yeah, yeah. nine years now, I'm I, I... <laughs> so yeah. So I, on the third day, we did one, two, three, four, five. I think so. And maybe on the fourth day, he said, uh, "Bro, I have forty f degrees fever. I cannot come to your session. Sorry, I, I gotta leave." I'm like, oh no, I didn't make two sleeves in one week. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then after one month, he messaging me like, uh, you, ha you, you have to finish my sleeves. Okay. So uh, me and my friends, we will find for you a house. We'll find for you. We will buy for you a ticket. We'll buy for you visa. We'll do for you everything. Just come and finish these sleeves. Okay. Yes. Wow. It, it was, and I was like, "What a stupid idea to come there to make my first trip in such a country." And uh, it wasn't country of my dream. I wasn't even believe that I can go in some 
place like that because I, I thought I'm going to start from Europe, like yeah. normal people starting yeah. from Europe. Yeah. Yeah. But they brought me he the, uh, here and uh, they organized everything. I was super happy and I was like shocked. Wow. Opportunity. Opportunity just came into my life, took me and uh, brought me there. Yeah. yeah. And I love that thing that um, you just need to take an opportunity. It's everywhere. Yeah, this you is just, a good example. Yeah. Like, you know, something came across to you and you could have said no and missed that opportunity, yeah. but you took that. That was one way to say no because my boyfriend like, oh, I don't know, to go. I don't want to go there. I want to see the in uh, Ukraine and stuff. Yeah, but um, I'm super grateful I started. It gave me a lot of um, inspiration and uh, I started to think where I can come more in yeah. which countries i can go yeah. and uh, i found my uh, friend she start she came to work with me um in the studio i opened the other one and um, we decided to travel all around the europe together in 2018 we did the plan to travel each month in a new country, in a new place, in a new city. And uh, our trip started from Berlin, Paris, then it was Krakow in Poland, Amsterdam. Um, then I came again to Dubai to do my art and uh, then I came to Brazil. Wow. Yeah, I found the guy in Brazil. I found the people, the producers, musicians, and bloggers, and they invited me to Brazil. And I'm like, okay, it's kind of expensive to go to Brazil. It was yeah. one thousand dollars tickets. It was super crazy for me, but I'm like, yeah, Brazil. It's kind of crazy story for a podcast. I <laughs> go to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> and I went alone to Brazil to just uh, have fun with some uh, local bloggers, musicians. We did raps, we did video clips there. Yeah. And in that time also I did the first musician video clip in Dubai. You know, did, did you know that I'm doing rap music? No, <laughs> no, no. I will not show you, but it was like that. Wow. Yeah. This is yeah. like you have had this... Uh, unplanned journey in between where in uh, 2019 seems like a year of uh... catching everything i see uh, music uh, uh, countries uh, canvases uh, people i was catching everything because i was super hungry like uh, i was yeah. i had the goal what i can catch more and yeah. more i was super hungry to catch opportunities because it was uh, it was very fun I think it's fun. I can imagine. It is fun. Also, it's a scary thing as well because you don't know what to expect yes. and you have done most of this alone. You have traveled alone. Yeah. You have gone to places to achieve things. You felt, I want to do this by myself, which is not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody would have that courage to do it. You know what I did? I was messaging just people on Instagram like, Hi, I'm going to Amsterdam. I need a place for living. Can somebody, somebody take me and my friend? Because we was uh, I was traveling and alone and with my friends. Yes. All over the Europe, it was with my friend Taya. And uh, I w we was just finding random people on Instagram that can host us. Oh, yeah. Because we was kind of without money. Yeah. But we had money, but not that much money. Yeah, to live in hotels and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. when you are a beginner... And you begin your tattoo career, uh, you don't have enough confidence to um, build your par portfolio, marketing, uh, to find new people in other countries. Because you're switching the countries, yes. uh, you don't have that much time, you're always uh, in a rush, you're running, yes. and uh, you're just uh, randomly pushing Instagram promotions and uh, seeing if it's going to work or not. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. In some countries, it was... Uh, not working well in some countries it was cool so yeah. i think which would be since you have traveled a bit now you have uh, tattooed in a few countries which would you call your favorite country so far as an artist as a tattoo artist i could say because uh, you know tattooer it's yeah. about 
uh, how much money you make yeah. because you can say there is nice um, countries but if they pay not that much it's not really cool yes then there is a countries that they pay a lot of money but people are super you know yeah yeah um and there is some people or some some places also like in balance maybe in balance for art for art it was perfect to work in paris okay because paris for me it's a kind of capital of aesthetic yeah, and yeah, art yeah, and yeah. art history yeah, also yeah but you can't communicate with people at all because they don't speak anything yes, else apart from they are literally getting scared when you start saying hi i don't speak french but i can make tattoos if you will talk to me in english yeah. and they're like leaving a chat yeah and that's all yeah yeah so i would say maybe uh, a well nice balance was uh, canada for me okay i just got this year the past year i got in canada i got my documents nice. and uh, i went there so it was in balance with money in balance with uh, people because we people were well open-minded mm they wasn't capricious they yeah, was like yeah, yeah. fine with everything i do they supported me also yeah. and i love that they gave me freedom yeah everywhere you can find freedom and nice people yeah but in europe it's getting hard now because uh because of the war because a lot of people from ukraine they came there and uh the situation in society is not really well-being and uh the competition is super high yeah so yeah, you have to survive in competition. So <laughs> since now, uh, Canada is pretty much home. Home? I don't have home. I have one home. It's my home. It's Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah, I don't have home. Home is the planet is home, you know. Yeah. yeah I, 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 don't, I don't think I found the perfect place with everything. Because somewhere there is not enough people. Somewhere there is not enough money. Some, somewhere is not enough uh lifestyle and things yeah yeah so i'm just i'm planning to travel until everything gonna be fine and i'm planning to make a culture in my country actually because uh it's very important i understand that i want to build uh, for now for next years i'm gonna build myself definitely with mindfulness with uh, doing everything with experience with i did a lot of mistakes in my life the mistakes is literally the biggest part of my background and i feel like these mistakes they they now i can do the things without doing these mistakes because I already did them yeah so i'm planning to build myself as an artist more more like uh, with confidence more with uh freedom because now i don't have this uh feeling of suffering that i don't need to suffer now yeah. i just i know what i do i know uh, how to get things together how to put all the things together and i'm planning to move with my music career also because uh, we're doing music with my boyfriend and uh, we're doing it cool now and we have a lot of dreams that we can chase and i understand there is nothing stop me to to chase this dream but in the end of everything i think i want to do something for my people and uh, for my home because now we got difficult situation that we lost a lot of talented people. They all now are in Europe and yes. all over the world. And I feel like a lot of things missing. Yes. So soon, I think I'm going to start to teach. I'm going to start to put the culture from the <laughs> from the zero yeah. not from the zero but you know i want to make it like as it was before yeah at least yeah yeah I, this is this kind of kind of like mission i have yeah yeah and i feel like it will do something good for the world it's not only for myself it's yeah. doing something for the world because yeah. world gave me a lot of things and i want want to give it back yeah yeah, but uh, now I'm still uh, planning to uh, to do more biggest project because projects, different ones, performances. I want to do art performances too because um, so 
I realized that there is nice people um, with who I can collaborate, like yeah. you, yeah. like other videographers. Yeah. And uh, for me, when I did my first video clips, when I did all my first uh, director uh, projects, yeah. uh, I realized that it's the same like art. You're just connecting all the things together yeah. and then in the end you have the ready product. Yeah. Like you're doing also the podcast yeah. and things. Yeah. And uh, it uh, helps to share with ideas yeah. because now my, my ideas they are kind of strong yeah. before it was just a research of things i can do research of random stuff and the research of ideas now i can realize re realize my ideas yeah. right yeah yeah and uh, i feel like uh, i can make it as an adult per person as an artist that is not like the beginner yeah i can make it as the person who has something on the back. It feels like, you know, you have experienced all these different scenarios in life yeah. and then now you have found what your strengths are, what you enjoy, what is your, like you said, your mission. Yeah. And I think it's somehow paved a way for you to say that, you know, Olya, you know, this is maybe a good path for you to take so that, you know, you can give back of what you have all learned through your life experiences. Yeah, before I was looking for myself literally because now I feel like I found myself because before I don't know who are you, what you're doing in this world, who is these people around you, why you are bad for them, why everybody trying to push you or bullying you or being aggressive, you don't understand fightings, you don't understand conflicts with people, you don't understand why you have uh, such a big uh, problems and troubles and uh, every time you, when you're coming through them yeah. you are kind of finding the part of yourself uh, the biggest hardest thing for me it was uh, to put all these parts of myself in one some like one concept because uh, it, i didn't know why i'm doing art why i'm doing music I'm not musician, I'm not a tour, I'm not a, a director, I'm not things and this and this yeah. and then I realized I'm just an artist and I can do whatever I want yeah. and uh, just being myself and uh, yeah, it took me a lot of time to yeah. understand who I am. Actually. Especially when you are a creative person, right? Yeah. You find creative ideas in multiple things and you want to do everything, you don't you don't never get stuck in one yeah. thing saying, you know, oh, this is the only thing I'm good at. You somehow find expansions of things like oh no i'm good at this also yes. oh i'm good at this also and everybody's saying you have to stop in something one yeah did, did everybody told it's, you that you have to they always like for me the thing is you know they say oh you are a photographer so just do photo but yeah. no you know i also do videos yeah. i also do design you know there's always elements of creative things that you can do but if you stop at one then you will never know if you were better in something else there is definitely the time when you have to Stop in something one to be focused more and to push it more up. Yeah. But uh, when you are looking, I mean, there is so many things around you that you can try. That's yes. so hard. Yeah. Like, you know, you feel that sometimes time is not enough and there's so much that you can do. Yeah. And, you know, that's the feeling I think we creative people in today's world find because we are spending so much time enjoying these new creative things. We feel like, wish there was more than seven days a week. Wish there was more than 24 hours in a day. All these things give you energy. It gives you energy, for, very true. To try everything. And uh, when you are inspired of uh, the things you want to do, you don't have uh, borders. And that's super cool. But yes. there is a time when you have to you know, separate things. Like that there is a thing that doesn't work well in your life. So you have to throw it. Yeah. Definitely. So what do you feel... 2024 is all about for you you know uh, you talked a little bit about something about the future where you want to give back to your country in a way but what have you planned for 2024 for you personally i think it's the year when i finally have to understand what i don't want to do in my life <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> i want everything <laughs> yeah so uh I mean, it's the time when I'm getting these decisions that from that moment, I'm not taking a bad clients. Yeah. From that moment, I'm not doing uh, some 
styles of music. Yeah. From that moment, I'm not wearing that type of clothes. I'm not talking to that type of people. I know who is my enemies. I know where is my friends. I know uh, it's time to understand everything about yourself on at, like. At that point because yeah. uh, before I was just uh, searching looking I wasn't sure and it, 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 it didn't give me enough confidence and now I think it's time to have this confidence to start finally to move to my mission <laughs> because I feel like maybe at that point I finally I found the mission yeah. Because I was uh, trying to find it since I was maybe uh, 15. So it took me 12 years maybe to understand things. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think I, I understood something. So it's time to... Yeah. It's it's the year when I I will take this decision to start. Yeah. To yeah. Move there. Yeah. I can see, I can see you doing uh, crazy but beautiful things because i think that's what you are <laughs> you are a force of energy you know uh, who always finds a way to do things your way which is the best thing i feel because uh, so we worked on a video a few weeks ago and i was so surprised to see how much attention to detail you have you know you always have this little little minute things also that you are very aware about which is a very good thing so I can for 100% say that you would be putting all your effort into what you're going to be doing from here on. Thank you. And for me, it is such a good experience having you here today and listening to your story, which is very raw and unfiltered in a way that, you know... Uh, <laughs> unfiltered. <laughs> unfiltered. <laughs> we try to keep it as much as, you know, we could talk about. But then, you know, uh, just to understand for a person how it is to come through all of these obstacles and still be able to achieve the things that you want to do and still be strong and as amazing as you are i think that is one of the reasons you know i wanted your story to be told for all your followers you have to find yourself and fight for that okay cool thank you so much thank Sonia. you very much it was hot <laughs> it was hot <laughs>